Just take a few moments and just worship the Lord. Just tell him how grateful you are, how thankful you are. Just love on him right now. Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your presence here to save, to heal, to deliver. And Lord, we're just so grateful to be here. You chose us to be here before the foundation of the earth. Every person in this room was determined to be here. You're not here by coincidence. You're not here because someone made you. The Holy Spirit brought you into this house for a word in its rightful season, in its right time to change your life. So God, we receive, say that with me, I receive the word of God, the goodness of God, and the power of God over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Welcome, welcome. How y'all doing? It's good to see you. You can stand with me if you want. Don't leave me alone up here. Just stand with me. It helps me calm down. It's good to see everybody tonight. My name's Joe. I'm pastor at the Arrowhead campus right up the street. And tonight I have the privilege of uh, bringing the word of God tonight. We will be in James chapter 1, beginning in verse number 12. We're on day number 4 of our growth series. James, in case you didn't know, is the younger brother of Jesus. Now, if you've ever been a younger brother, you know how hard that is. The older brother tends to pick on you, to uh, kind of takes all the time and to be the younger brother of Jesus, I mean, how intimidating that must have been for James. Can you imagine growing up and being the younger brother of Jesus? I mean, Jesus was a perfect child. I know many of you parents think your child is perfect, but they ain't perfect. Jesus, however, was a perfect child. How does one measure up to perfection? The measuring rod for James was the perfect brother, Jesus. What a high standard that must have been. How intimidating that must have been to be living with him. We also have the same standard though. Our measuring rod is also perfection. It is Jesus, the highest standard there is. I bet that James got in trouble a lot for not behaving like his big brother Jesus. I can almost assure he, he got some lickings for not being like his brother. I can imagine how competitive the home must have been for James trying to live up to the standard of his brother. Poor James, probably on his report card, may have brought home an A, was all proud of it. When Jesus comes home, his report card is A++. James maybe came home from school proud that he, he made the swim team. He learned how to swim. But here comes Jesus walking on water. How proud Jane must have been. He he buys a loaf of bread, brings it home to his mom, and what happens? Jesus turns it into 12. I mean, how do you live up to those standards? Very, very difficult. Maybe that's why he was not initially a believer. Even though James grew up in the home with Jesus, he did not believe in in Jesus. Now, interesting, you can be so close to God and still not believe. 
God can be so close to you and you don't even realize it. You don't even acknowledge it. You don't even understand it. James lived with God and he was completely unaware. The Bible says in John 7, 5 that for even his own brothers did not believe in him. Most scholars agree that James did not put his faith in Jesus until after the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says that Jesus appeared to Peter, then to the 12, and then to more than 500 people, and then he appeared to James. How awkward that must have been. James was not a believer, but he could not deny what he was seeing when he saw the resurrected Christ. He, he inevitably became the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. And so he writes this letter to the believers, and we're going verse by verse through the Bible, which is the, my preferred way to, to read the Bible is verse by verse. If you jump around through the Bible and just read verses here and there, that's, that's like eating a, a chocolate sundae. You get a, a little bit here, a little bit, it's okay, but you can't live off it. For me, I have to read verse by verse. That way I get the meat, the potatoes, the vegetables, everything that's in the Word of God. I want it all. I don't want to skip anything. It's all really, really good. Amen? So let's read, starting in verse number 12. We'll read together through God's Word. Father, thank you for your Word just expound it here today and make it clear to our ears in Jesus' name. He starts off by saying this word. We all hear blessed. Someone say blessed. Now we say that a lot, but what it really means, it, it means to be supremely blessed. It means to be exceptionally happy. How many blessed people do we have in the house tonight? You are supremely blessed and exceptionally happy. You're the type of person that walks around with a grin on your face all the time. People always wondering what that smirk is. Well, it's because I'm blessed in the Lord. I have the joy of the Lord. I have salvation. I have relationship with Jesus. That's where my joy comes from. He said, blessed. Someone say blessed. Blessed is the man or woman who endures. The word endures means he, the one who doesn't give in. If you endure, then you don't give in. Give in to what? He says here, temptation. So you are blessed as a believer if you endure or don't give in to temptation. You are a happy man or woman when you don't give in to temptation. It says, for when this person has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. The crown is a symbol of rank given to victors who have overcome temptation. Now, what I want to point out here is the crown is designated towards those who endure or don't give in to temptation. The blessed life is for those who do not give in to temptation. The reward of the crown that Jesus promises is, is to those who do not give in to temptation, who have been approved. In other words, they don't give in. They've been proven that they're legitimate. They're unwavering Christians. They're believers. They stand on the word. They don't move. They don't cower. They don't compromise their beliefs. When God speaks something, they obey it. Those are the types of people that God is talking about here that receive this crown. God is not in the business of handing out crowns to just anybody. 
Contrary to popular belief, not everyone gets a crown. Everyone does not get a ribbon. Everyone does not graduate. Everyone does not get a certificate. Everyone does not get a trophy. Everyone does not get a shiny star next to their name. It's only those who are victorious over temptation that receive the crown that Jesus has promised. Every time you, you don't lust, you get a crown. Every time you don't do drugs, you get a crown. Every time you don't get drunk, you get a crown. Every time you don't make out with your boyfriend, you get a crown. Every time you don't flip out at the person at the Wendy's, you get a crown. Every time you don't get jealous, you get a crown. You don't steal, you get a crown. You get, don't lie, you're not lazy, you don't covet. You crown after crown after crown. Crowns are a symbol of authority. Someone say authority. The devil understands authority. And what, and what temptations you've conquered by the crowns that you wear. The devil can see the, the things that he cannot tempt you with. He can see that you've been rewarded because you don't give in. And when the demon uh, finds out that you can't be moved or, or you can't, you're, not, you're not the person that is going to give in, then they just move on. They tend to not bother you as much. They go over to, I don't know, the Martinez family next door or the Gonzalez is up the street, but, the, no, but they're not coming near your dwelling. Because they know in the spiritual realm, you've been given authority. You've mastered something. You've conquered something. You received something. And it shows in the spirit they see it. Revelation 2.10 says this, Do not fear any of those things which you're about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation for 10 days. But he says this, be faithful. Someone say, be faithful. Be faithful. Watch this. Until death. And then Jesus says, if you're faithful unto death, I will give you what? The crown, same crown, the crown of life. There are five different crowns in the Bible. This is one of them, the crown of life. The crown of life is a symbol of faithfulness to the Lord. Faithfulness. To who? To the Lord. James chapter 1, verse 12. Let's go back there. It says, he or that person will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who, what? Love him. Those who, those who what? Do not give in to temptation. Those blessed people, those exceptionally happy people. He will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who, what? So tell me again, love him. Why did he say love? Well, love is the motivating factor behind everything that we do. Without love, you cannot resist temptation. It's love is a reason why you resist. It's because you love God. Because you love your family. Because you love your wife, you love your children, you love your church, you love your ministry. You, you, you have a genuine affection towards God and towards his people and it causes you to resist temptation. Because of love, I don't cheat on my wife. Because of love, I don't drink. Because of love, I don't do drugs. Because of love, I'm not greedy. Because of love, I don't envy. I love God more than all those other things. Love keeps me faithful to God. I'm faithful to God. I won't be cheating on God. 
Why would I, why in the world would I do that? Love keeps us faithful to God. Verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. A lot of people say that. That God's the one that's tempting you. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. God is not the one who's tempting you. The devil is. God doesn't tempt anyone with evil. Psalm 5, 4 says God takes no pleasure in evil. God doesn't have anything to do with evil. He's not the one tempting anybody. That's the devil and, and, and your own sinful nature. Verse 14, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away. Say drawn away. Drawn away is a Greek word that describes a hunting term. And it, it means to be lured out of safety. You're drawn away. It means to be lured out of safety by his own desires. Watch this. And enticed, which, is, which means baited. There's a tempter who's coming to each and every one of us who's trying to draw us away to lead us out of safety. And he's using our own desires and baiting us to break God's law and to fall into sin. In other words, you are being hunted. And the hunter is using your desires as bait. In other words, the hunter knows what you like. He knows the kind of women you like. The kind of men you like, the kind of drugs you like, the places you like to go, things that make you feel good. And God wants us to get delivered from all those things. Those, none of those things should be in the place of God, including coffee. If you can't stop drinking coffee, how are you ever going to stop? Please. You can't even stop drinking coffee. And you're going to try and cast a demon out. Okay. You're crazy. The hunter knows what you like. And so he tries to bait you by sending you what you like. That's why we're not doing social media. You get those pop-ups. And interesting, the pop-ups that you like. Do you think that's all just circumstantial? Oh, the devil knows. Just to put an image in your, in your mind, just, just that quick. Trying to lead you astray. He's attempting to lure you out of the strong tower of God so he can trap and destroy you. As long as you're in God's strong tower, his refuge, his safe place, you are just fine. No weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper as long as I am there. But the moment I step out of God's presence and into the devil's devices and temptation and area or arena, I am subject to failure. That goes for anybody. I don't care how long you've been saved. The mighty fall. Even the mighty fall. Don't think that you're some super Christian. Like it can't happen to you. It's probably uh, happening to you and you don't even know it. Help us, Jesus. We must learn to control our own desires. We must learn to resist the bait. That's what you got to do. And that takes practice. There's no other way to do it. You're going to have to practice doing it. 
And you do one by one by one by one. Take, just take one. Pick one. Well, there's too many. Pick one. Just pick one. Learn to say no. That's such a powerful word. No. Learn to say no. But in the world, we say yes to everything. Yes. You want to get some more beer? Yes. You want to go steal something? Yes. Let's go. You want to go to another party? Yes. Everything was yes. But with God, now you have to learn to say no. You're going to have to learn to turn away. You're going to have to learn to resist the devil so that he can flee. You're, and you're certainly going to have to know when you're being suckered in and being baited. Verse 15. We're doing pretty good here. I didn't think I'd have time. It says, then when desire, that's our desire. When our desire has conceived, underline that word conceived. When my desire has conceived and what that means it literally means to become pregnant when my desire becomes pregnant it gives birth it gives birth to what sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth we all know death let's read that again then when desire has conceived, becomes pregnant, it gives birth to sin, temptation, and desire are having intercourse. And there's a natural birth that's taking place. And the birth is what? Sin. And sin might be fine for a season, but when it's full grown, it grows teeth. And it brings forth what? Death and destruction, misery, we all, yada, yada, we all know, we all been there. But James is using reproductive terms to describe the birth of sin. Sin has a reproductive cycle. And the question I have for you is, are you in a sin cycle? Got real quiet right there. I know when I'm preaching good at Arrowhead, it gets real quiet. Are you in a sin cycle? Are you repeating the same sins over and over and over again? Being baited in over and over again and you can't seem to resist. You do good for a season and then you fall. And you can't seem to conquer that thing that's conquering you. You are in a reproductive cycle with temptation and the devil. And the result, there are babies being born. Sin babies. And you can dress them up all you want. Perfume on them all you want. Comb their hair all you want. Make them look good. But they are still sin. The cycle that you're in will be made obvious by what you're reproducing. It will be very, very obvious in your life. People won't have to look far to know what you are reproducing. What we should be reproducing are disciples. If we love the Lord and, 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 we're, and we're obeying God, then what we should be reproducing are more disciples for God. And so you, we all have to take a good look at our life and see what is there. 
And what is your part? Because you have a part. Right? It takes two people to have a baby, right? Last I checked, anyway. This is good stuff. You can just go through the Bible like this, man. Oh, gosh, it's all good. It's so good. Like, I get stuck on, like, one word. I can't get back. When I read the Bible, I, I get lost in the Bible. I start looking behind commas. I start going through letters, looking at words. I just, I just get lost in it. It's the word of God that, that clean, cleans my mind, renews my mind, changes the way I think, gives me inner strength, gives me authority, helps me to know what my identity is. Helps me to see right, think right, speak right. The word of God corrects me, rebukes me, encourages me, guides me, shows me, reveals to me. It's the word of God. And we're, we're a church that is committed to the word of God. At least I think we are. That's what we're, that's what we're aiming for. How are you guys doing on your reading? Good? Amen. You're, you're on day four. That's it. Day four, man, that's, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Temptation is sin's way of asking for your permission to conceive. Temptation is sin's way of asking for your permission to conceive. The fact that you're, be, you're being tempted is not sin. It's what you do with it. If you conceive with it, and sin comes as a byproduct, well, then, you, then you're in sin. Temptations will come, but our job is to what? Resist. Our job is to rebuke. Our job is to correct what we're seeing, what we're hearing. That's our job. And this never goes away. You never get a break, hardly. Because we live in a fallen world, and the devil wants you to fall. The devil wants you to fail. The devil wants to destroy you. The devil wants you to backslide. But you have to get tenacity. You got to get built up in the spirit. You got to have the word of God in you. You got to have power in you to be able to resist the wiles and schemes of the devil. He says, do not, do not give permission and you will overcome temptation and receive the crown that God has promised to those that love him. Don't, don't give permission. Learn to say no. Turn to your neighbor and tell him no. Just practice right now. Practice right now. Just... Give him a firm no. Ain't happening. <laughs> I believe that, that God wants us to overcome. I believe that God certainly wants to give the crown of life to everyone in this room. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. And that, that when God puts this crown that he's promised to give you, man, he's proud of you. When you resist and you do the right thing and you, and you, you tell temptation where to go, God is so proud of you. Every time that you don't drink, every time that you don't smoke, every time that you don't cuss, every time uh, that you don't watch pornography, whatever you're doing, God is so proud of you. Do you believe that? Amen. So we're just going to keep chugging our way through the book of James. I think Sunday we're, we're are we at it again? On, yeah, we are. This is nonstop. Nonstop. Can we have coffee by Sunday? No. <laughs> you got to work on that coffee devil. 
Coffee is, is, own, uh, is basically Christ, Christian methamphetamines. That's what coffee is. <laughs> and stop it. Just stop it. All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. And I will not be bound by any of them. It's just coffee. No, it's not. Then stop it. It's just a donut. Okay, then stop eating donuts. Just, just a donut. Just stop it then. Let's see who's got who. Pray, help us, Lord. All right. I think we're done. Let's all stand to our feet. Did you guys learn anything tonight? All right. <laughs> Are you guys ready to go practice? That's what's going to happen. Go we'll practice some more. More crowns. I saw some pictures uh, on the internet of Jesus putting the crown of life on people. It was so powerful. There are five different crowns in the Bible that the Bible talks about. And some people are getting all five. And so we're not, we're not talking... The, the picture that I, that I see, and we're not talking like a little ballerina tiara. <laughs> like, maybe that's some people's crowns in here. They haven't, conquered, they haven't conquered much. They got a little tiara. <laughs> They're like cute. That's a cute little crown there. But the ones that I was watching, seeing on the internet were like, it, they were so vast. They were huge. So powerful what heaven's going to be like. Because what we don't see right now is all going to become reality in heaven. You don't want to be in heaven with, with no crown. <laughs> like you have a t-shirt that says, just barely made it. <laughs> barely made it. <laughs> glad, glad to be here. <laughs> you, you, you want some, some type of reward. Praise the Lord. What are we going to go home and do? Practice. Practice what? Saying no to what? Just about everything. It's everything. TV, no. Internet, no. Social media, no. Drinking, no. Too much sports, no. YouTube, no. Just practice. Practice just getting in the word of God. What we're doing right now is we're seeing if just the word alone, is that sufficient enough for you? Or do you need all this other stuff? And what God is saying is like, am I enough for you? Just me, you, and, and my word. Is that enough, son, daughter? Why do you have to have all these other things? You'll never find joy in those things. You'll never find satisfaction. Only thing you'll find peace and satisfaction and fulfillment is in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. And what I want to do tonight is I want to just make a call for people that maybe you're in a cycle of sin. And you say, tonight, no more. That thing right there, no more. I'm making a decision tonight. I'm not going to let that thing rule over my life. I'm not going to give in no more. You're going to take a stand. Jesus is going to help you. The Holy Spirit is going to help you. And you're going you're gonna to start tonight to turn away. To turn away. No longer be drawn, drawn away. No longer be baited. You're going to make a conscious decision. And you know what? You get that crown. You go for it. Don't let nothing stop you. Go all in. And tonight, if that's you, I just want to invite you up here today. Come on up. The altar will be open. We're going to worship and close the, the night out with some prayer. And some people that are making a decision. All over this room, let's bow our head, close our eyes. 
begin to pray. Somebody's making a decision right now for God. If you're in this room and you say, hey, I need a relationship with Jesus. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. I need to give my life to him. I've been doing life on my own terms, my own way. You want to give your life to him? Come on up. Be bold about it. Don't be embarrassed. Be bold. Everyone's going to cheer for you, love you, appreciate you, adore you. We're proud of you. Come get your crown. Come on. Don't let the devil take it from you. Come get your crown. Come get what God wants to give you. He wants to give it to you. He wants to give it to you. He wants to give it to you. Get out of your seat. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be worried. God is going to teach your hands to war. He's going to show you how to fight that thing. Good job. Proud of you. Good job. Good job. All right. Come on, more people out there. Come on. Praise Jesus. Stretch your hands out towards these folks that came forward. Are you guys here for prayer? Come on. Today your life changes. Today your life changes. You're no longer going to see life through your eyes no more. You're going to see through different lenses. Okay? Your past has been, has been dimmed, shadowed by your upbringing. People taught you how to see. Okay? But God is going to give you his eyes. See people through his eyes, even yourself through, through his eyes. Amen? Yeah, everything changes today. All right. Stretch your hand towards these people who came forward. They say, Jesus, I desire a relationship with you. I want to be crowned. I want to be rewarded, and I need to be forgiven. I repent from all my sins. I turn away from everything that you deem is wrong, and I turn to you. I surrender my life to you. Teach me. Show me your way. Teach me your will. Guide me. Holy Spirit, come into my life teach me to live for God fill me now I receive forgiveness love mercy over my life I am forgiven I am saved and I am born again and I choose to turn away from temptation to resist the devil from this day forward in Jesus name Amen. Give God a shout of praise. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Pastor Christian. Come on. How many receive from that word tonight? How many are ready to say no? Someone say no. Come on. Let's go out there. We got to learn to say no. God bless you, church. Don't forget, this is day four. Let's stay locked in to our 30-day growth challenge. We're fasting together. We're reading the book of James together. We're tuning into our daily devotions on YouTube together. Let's get all of this. Let's not miss any of this. It's going to be awesome. If any prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. And don't forget, young adults, this Friday night at 7 p.m., be here, all young adults. If you're ages 18 or in your 20s, 18 to 29, be here, all young adults, 7 o'clock. It's going to be awesome.